Welcome to part two of my recycling video series. This video will teach you what composting is, what materials can be composted, and a few details on the composting process. Compost is organic matter that has been decomposed and recycled as fertilizer. It is a natural pesticide and the key to organic growing. Compost is basically a large heap of damp organic materials that are set to break down over time. The product can be used in landscaping, horticulture, and agriculture. Much of what we throw away can either be recycled or composted, so compost also means there is less garbage that ends up in landfills. Worms and insects are an important part of composting because they help to create air pockets for air and water. Air and water in the soil benefits plant roots and creates a healthy environment for soil animals and beneficial microbes, and all of these help plants grow. So, what can you compost at home? Food and garden scraps are the main categories that pop into people's heads when they think of composting. But did you know you can compost other materials as well? I will now present a video that explains the things you can compost and why. Food scraps is the main priority. That's going to be bread, grains, and pasta, coffee grounds, dairy, eggshells, fruit, Leftovers and spoiled food, which is mainly for all of you restaurants out there. These leftovers and spoiled food can include meat, bones, seafood, and vegetables. So all of the leftovers or scraps from plates that you have can be scraped into a compost container and sent to composting. All that we do not want is a bunch of meat and seafood, say from a supermarket meat department, because those items should actually be sent to meat rendering rather than to composting. But scraps from restaurants and scraps from any organization, uh, not just in large quantities of meat and seafood, is perfectly okay. Next up on the list is soiled paper. As you can see, there is a plethora of items in the soiled paper area that can actually be composted. The main thing to understand in soiled paper is that all paper is not compostable. Only paper that is strictly paper-based is compostable. What I mean is paper cups and paper plates a lot of times have polypropylene or plastic liners in them. You need to make sure that there is no plastic whatsoever in the paper and it is fully acceptable for composting. If there's no plastic, it's okay. When it comes to cardboard, as you can see at the bottom, wax paper cardboard is fully acceptable. That is paper cardboard that is wax coated that has no plastics. We do accept other types of cardboard, but it must have no tape, stickers, or any type of plastics because that is bad for the compost. As for the next section on yard trimmings, most businesses or organizations will not have these materials unless they have a large amount of landscaping around their facility. The family home will, and if it is available, all of these materials should go to composting. These are great items for composters to get a hold of for their carbon source and their green materials. Landscaping materials should always go to composting. As for the other category, the most important aspect of compostable materials is finding those products that are certified by a composting agency or a composter. If they are not certified compostable materials like cups and silverware, then it does not go to a composter. The key is asking your local composter if the materials are acceptable or not when it comes to compostable products. Now, despite the number of things you can compost, there are many things you cannot as you can see by this chart. Examples include aluminum, cat litter, liquids, clothing, and styrofoam. Although composting can be complex to explain, it is not so hard to do on your own. I will now present some video segments about how to compost. Compost happens, which means that you don't have to do a whole lot to make this work, but it does help to have a few things that make it a little neater and a little easier to manage. 
You can buy fancy bins, but you can also just start with something as simple as a roll of chicken wire that you form into a circle and then fill it with your material. Okay, we've got some of the material here. I'm going to pick this up because I'm the novice. And if I can do it, anyone can. What do we have here exactly? We have what we call the brown parts of compost, and you're, you want to balance the, the browns and the greens. The brown stuff is stuff that's starting to dry decay. This would be like straw, shredded leaves. Those are great brown ingredients. You want to mix that three to one to the greens. It's a good basic base layer to put down. When you rake your lawn in the fall and you get your leaves, you just gather all that stuff up. That is a great time to start with compost is to get in the fall because you have all those leaves. Okay, so this is the first layer. You just put that in there. And it's important that the air circulates because you, you could, I suppose, put it in a trash can, but if there's no air, it, it will start a whole different process. If you, no air, it will start to smell. If you leave it where there's plenty of air circulation, you will not smell and you will not attract animals. One of the concerns that people have about making compost. All right, so we have the brown ingredients. Next come the green ingredients. And what do they involve? The green ingredients are things that are fresher than that. They're not dried. Grass clippings is an excellent compost ingredient. I also brought some great green ingredients for us. I saved some from our, our home compost pail. You call them green ingredients. I call them garbage, but all right. So there we have banana peel, avocado peel. There's some tea bag in there. All There's right. some peelings from a cucumber. Eggshells are an excellent ingredient to add. It's the only animal source ingredient. I was going to say, I would think animal, the eggshells are an animal. They are, but the, the shells themselves are really high in a nutrient called calcium. It's very helpful. Just dump the whole thing. You would also add in here garden plants that have finished, house plants, cut flowers, coffee grounds is a great ingredient. I know it's brown, but manure is a great ingredient for a compost pile. It has to come from an herbivore. So chickens, horses, cows, those are great ingredients for a compost pile, and they are green because they're high in nitrogen, even though they're brown. How long does this take exactly? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that your pile is big enough to start decomposing. This is, bin is a perfect size because it needs to be three feet high, three feet wide, and three feet deep. So once you have that, then you'll have the critical mass, the pressure that begins the decomposing process. If you're a very enthusiastic compost maker and you turn it every week, two months, and you'll have compost. You have in the center... You have now finished watching the second video of my recycling video series. I hope this video has inspired you to start composting at home and to inspire others to start composting.